what the flip has been going on at Silicon Valley Bank. For those of you that don't know, I'm gonna explain it to you in less than four minutes in basic English. Let's go. All right. Ugh. When you and I put our money in a bank, we're entitled to get that money back whenever we want it, right? However, the bank knows that everyone who gives them money isn't gonna ask for it back at the same time. So as a result, what they do is they spend your money and my money on investments in order to make money for themselves. And then they give us a bit of that return as interest, so long as we keep our money in the bank month to month, yeah? Now, these investments that the banks make are typically fairly safe. They are investing in things like government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. These are typically backed by the government, so they have the government's backing that if anything goes wrong, the government will kind of cover some of it. Now, government bonds are loans and mortgage-backed securities, MBS for short, are basically ways to invest in a pool of mortgages. Now, you've got millions of people who take out mortgages and they pay off their mortgage month by month. And so it's a way for investment banks and firms to invest in a pool of mortgages because there's a monthly recurring fee being paid. And so it's a safe investment. They know they can put their money into it and when they need to get their money, they can pull it back out. All right, so how does all of this impact Silicon Valley Bank? So Silicon Valley Bank is kind of like any bank except their clients or most of their clients are specifically tech companies and startups. They've raised a lot of money. They don't have a use for all of the money at once. And so they kind of give it to Silicon Valley Bank. It's kind of the bank for startups and tech companies and it's grown that brand over time now between 2019 and 2021 a lot of these startups and tech companies raised so much money the deposits that they were putting into silicon valley bank tripled so now all of a sudden silicon valley bank has tripled its deposits but it needs to find a use for all of this money. There's no point in it just holding it because it will erode due to inflation. So they need to invest it in the relevant government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. Now here's where the problem starts. They ended up buying close to $100 million worth of government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. And at the time that they were doing it, interest rates were really low. They're around 1.5%. However, in most recent times, global interest rates, especially in the US and the UK, for example, have slowly been creeping up. When interest rates go up, the price of bonds, so the assets that they were buying, declines. I'll do a separate video explaining the inverse relationship between bond prices and interest rates, but all you need to know for this video is as interest rates increase, bond prices drop. So imagine you spent $80 million on buying bonds at one price and then interest rates went up and the price of these bond bonds actually dropped because interest rates went up. So that $80 million, for example, that Silicon Valley Bank invested is worth a lot less. So they've got less money than they were given by all of their customers. So they bought tons of bonds which are now losing value. And so what happens next? So immediately they tried to sell some of their assets into the market in order to recoup some losses, but they would do so at a loss because the assets are worth less now. And as they were selling lots of assets into the market, some of their customers got a whiff of this. They found out and they heard, Silicon Valley Bank is making lots of weird sales right now. Why are they doing it? Is there an issue? When you hear that there's an issue with your bank or they're doing something that's uncommon or you know not normal, what are you gonna do? Both of us are gonna run to the bank, take out all our money, right? So that's what a lot of the tech companies and depositors started doing. They ran to Silicon Valley Bank and started withdrawing their funds. Now Silicon Valley Bank, let's say it's taken hundreds of millions of deposits from people, but it's only got half of that or less than half of that available to give out. So how does it pay everyone back? That's where the problem lies. When this happens, when everyone's running to the bank to take out their money at the same time, this is what we call a run on a bank. And so that's kind of where this main issue began. They didn't have enough money to cover the deposits when everyone was running for their money. So then it becomes a systemic issue. It becomes an issue for the government to decide do we just let them fail or do we bail them out? People get pissed off when banks get bailed out if you look back to 2008 because it's typically with taxpayers' money. So there's three options actually. The first is let them fail. The second is bail them out with taxpayers' money. Third option is hope that another company, another bank or you know corporation comes and acquires the failing bank. Typically why they would do this is because they get it at a discount. This actually happened in the UK. So HSBC bought the Silicon Valley Bank UK branch for one, one pound. This happened a lot in the 2008 global financial crisis where banks were struggling, so they merged. So you had Bank of America, you had Merrill Lynch struggling, so they both merged. Today you have Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Lehman Brothers, they were allowed to fail. You had Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan and a few others getting government bailouts through taxpayers' money. So you've got various examples. The government and the world didn't want this to happen again with Silicon Valley Bank 
what, 2023, 2008, 15 years on. And so the US government stepped in as quickly as they can before markets opened on Monday and they took care of the situation. And that's pretty much the Silicon Valley Bank saga summed up in a few minutes. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here and tune in next time for more informal, insightful and easy to follow videos. Peace.